number 23 the age of comparison the less men are fettered by tradition the greater becomes the inward activity of their motives the greater again in proportion thereto the outward restlessness the confused flux of mankind the polyphony of striped things for whom is there still an absolute compulsion to bind himself and his descendants to one's place? For whom is there still anything strictly compulsory? As all styles of art are imitated simultaneously, so are also all grades and kinds of morality, of customs, of cultures. Such an age obtains its importance because in the various views of the world, customs and cultures can be compared and experienced simultaneously, which was formerly not possible with the always localized sway of every culture corresponding to the rooting of all artistic styles in place and time an increased aesthetic feeling will now at last decide amongst so many forms presenting themselves for comparison it will allow the greater number that is to say all those rejected by it to die out in the same way a selection amongst the forms and customs of the higher moralities is taking place of which the end could be nothing else than the downfall of lower moralities it is the age of comparison that is its pride but more justly also its grief let us not be afraid of this grief Rather, we will comprehend as adequately as possible the task our age sets us. Posterity will bless us for doing so. A posterity which knows itself to be as much above the terminated original na national cultures as above the culture of comparison, but which looks back with gratitude on both kinds of culture as upon antiquities worthy of veneration.